Hello and welcome to a new video about simple electric circuits. We're talking about the Wheatstone bridge. Last time we said, okay, the Wheatstone bridge is nice. And however, we have to deal with different loads. So I want to show you today a variant how we can deal with loads. And we already know the technique because actually here I've thrown a Wheatstone bridge and here is our load. Huh? RL. And what is happening to our behavior? How is our Wheatstone bridge behaving if we have this? Well, we talked about the theorem of De Venin, yeah? and I want to replace this whole circuit, this linear circuit, right? So I have only resistors, I have only uh, voltage sources inside, so this is not too, too difficult. So I am going to replace this with this simple circuit so that we have here our RL we have here an RI we need to determine an internal resistance and we have here a voltage source voltage I call it US for source voltage we have here UA and of course there are still the clamps A and B. This is the transition we are going to make and therefore we are using, so we are going from here to here because this is much easier to, to calculate with different loads. All right, so first thing we said, remember, Devenin, first thing, set all, set all things to zero, yeah? set all sources to zero and calculate the internal resistance. So let's zero. So first, set all sources to zero and Calculate Ri. So setting the voltage source to zero, looking like that, we have here R1, we have here R2, we have here R4, uh, R3 of course, <laughs> I was ahead of my time. And here I have R4. Good. That's it. And we want to calculate from A to B the resistance. This does look a little bit complicated, right? It does indeed. So let's start here at A. So we have here A. And we have separate. We are going to separate this. On one hand we have R3. On the other hand we have R4. And now what is next? Ah, a, a combination. So we have here is connected. And we have here R1. And here R2 as well. And then we are at B. So this looks now much friendlier than before, right? So we are realizing these are two parallel, two parallel connections, right? Two parallel switches. Ah, uh, one thing here. R3 and R4 in parallel. Uh, so we have an R3-4 which is 1 divided by 1 divided by R3 plus 1 divided by R4. And this is equal, bring this to the same 
This is R4 plus R3. R3 multiplied by R4. So this is R3 multiplied by R4 divided by R3 plus R4. Good. So this is that. And now the other side, R1 and R2, I do exactly the same thing. R12 equals 1 divided by 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 and now bring this to the same denominator R1 multiplied by R2 this equals R1 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2 Alright, so actually what we do have is A Then we have this R3, 2, R3, 4, of course, yeah, and then we have R1, 2. And there is B. And now it's a serious connection, and serious connections are easy, right? So we have here already our Ri and this is R34 plus R12. So Ri equals and now it simply Switch the, the order R1 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3 multiplied by R4 divided by R3 plus R4. All right, so this is our, our, our Ri. This is what we calculated according to the plan. What is the second step? The second step Calculate the no load voltage And this is US then Good, so let's calculate the no load voltage uh, Here we are open uh, so we don't have to consider uh, our RL and uh, well how much is U2 let's see U2 equals U0 multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2 uh, voltage divider Voltage divider root, I said it's going to make it easier. And U4 equals U0 as well, yeah, multiplied by R4 divided by R3 plus R4. Alright, that's what we have here. And then we have here, which color do I use? This purple have here a loop loop one loop one what does it mean u2 minus u4 plus ua equals zero volts this means ua which is then already the no load voltage because there is no resistance inside yeah, UA equals U no load, of course, in this case. Uh, and this is uh, U4 minus U2. And now we only have to set this in. So U4 is U0 multiplied by R4 divided by R3 plus R4. And now minus U0 
multiplied by R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And this equals U0 multiplied by, and now I make a bracket, uh, R4 divided by R3 plus R4 minus R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And this is US. This is US. And this is RI. We see, it was a little work, yeah? but we only had to do it once. Because now we can change. This is behaving now exactly the way like this is behaving with those parameters. And we can change whatever we like on RL and see how it is influencing. And I once said, okay, all the resistors, we have the, the biggest, the, the best, the best sensitivity, all resistors are the same. So look at, look at that. This is one resistor in parallel, two, and the, the, the other two in parallel and then in series. If we do have all resistors the same, yeah, this means if we have those two parallel, then it's only half. If we have those two parallel, it's only half. But we add those two, so we're ending up with one resistance. Yeah? With one, exactly one, if all resistors are at equal, the internal resistance of our, of our, uh, fictional uh, voltage source is exactly that resistor. This means if I have, for instance, I don't know, 100 ohms. Huh? I have 100 ohms, then I have also everywhere 100 ohms, then I have here also 100 ohms. Huh? So if I have a voltage measurement device and I need to stay far, far, far away above those, those uh, internal resistance that we don't have too much influence, let's say, I don't know, factor 1000 or whatever, yeah, then I would need 100,000 ohms yeah? internal resistance. Maybe a little bit more if I want to be more accurate. Yeah? Kilo, uh, mega ohm. Yeah? So this sounds to be doable. Yeah? But if you have here, let's say 10,000 ohms, yeah? then you also have 10,000 ohms, and then you need, you know, then you need a, a lot of mega ohms already to not influence the. This is then getting sophisticated, all right? Even in case, I know mm, the internal resistance of voltage measurement devices are pretty good, uh, but also if, the, if at the bridge one resistor is getting too, too high or the resistors are getting too high, it's really, really not that nice. Wheatstone bridge with load, you see, typical application of the, the Venner theorem. Uh, that's it for simple electric circuits, I would say. Uh, this is already not that simple, so um, we will keep it that way. Huh? So this is the end of the series of this video. Next series of video will be we're talking about the electric field. What, what can we see on effects of electric field and why we see that and then we dig into applications like a capacitor. This is the next series of video. You don't have to watch it, but you can. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.